Hi everyone, I'm Al Brooks, and with the big sell-off that we've had in January so far, I thought it would be a good time to talk about what might happen during the remainder of 2022 and in the years following. Today is January 24th. We had a big reversal today in the E-mini. I want to begin by showing the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is a chart that goes back 100 years, way back to the 1920s. This chart, as well as some yearly charts that I'm going to use, were created by a hedge fund manager, Ali Afshari, who's a friend of mine. He's also been in my chat room for many years. He's a very good trader, and I'm very appreciative that he provided these charts. What you notice on this chart is the second half of the chart, we accelerated up greatly. In the first half of the chart, it's basically a horizontal line. And that's because of the scaling. And anytime you have a chart, where the recent bars are 10 times or more greater than the earlier bars, that's what happens. You cannot see what's going on with the earlier bars. And to get around that, you switch to semi-log charts, which I'm going to do now. This is 100 years of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Each bar is one year. This red bar is 2022, and the green bar right before it is 2021. Semi-log scale, and you can see the higher prices get compressed and the lower prices get expanded so that you can see what took place. The one striking thing about this chart is that it has never been in a bear trend. A bear trend is a chart pattern. It's a series of lower highs and lower lows. And we've never had that. We've had some big sell-offs, some of the sell-offs were 50% or more, but we never had a trend on the chart, at least not on the yearly chart. And there probably has never been a bear trend on any yearly chart of the world's economy or of the stock market. This is the 1929 crash. The market sold off 89% in four years. Is that a bear trend? No, a bear trend is a series of lower highs and lower lows. It's a bear trend on the monthly charts and weekly charts and daily charts, but on the yearly chart, it's not. Is it a bear market? Sure. A bear market simply means the market's down 20% from the high. This was down 89%. There were many bear markets during the past 100 years, but no bear trends on the yearly chart. This is the same 100 years of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And now I'm showing a monthly chart. Every bar is one month. And you can see there have been many big sell-offs over the course of the 100 years. But if you're an investor, you don't get scared and sell out when the market is down 20%, 30%. In fact, you do the opposite. An investor, like in your retirement account, you're buying and you're holding for 20 years, 30 years, making very few changes. And these sell-offs, they're rare. Most of the time, the market's going up, but it's, sometimes it sells off 20%, 30%, 50%. And if you're an investor and you have cash, those are opportunities to buy. And the reason you do that is because the market has been going up for 100 years, in fact, since the beginning of civilization. And since the 1929 crash, at any point, the market has been higher than it was 20 or 30 years earlier and sometimes many times higher. So a great strategy for young investors is buy stocks, buy ETFs, and hold for decades. If you're 20, 30, 40 years old, you can hold for 20, 30 or more years, and you'll be shocked at how much money you'll have at the end of that time, because the market will just keep doubling. Every decade or two, it'll double. This is a yearly chart of the S&P cash index. So every bar is one year. This is 2022, and this is 2021, 2020. Obviously, we have 11 months remaining in 2022. Right now, it's a bear bar, but it might not be a bear bar come the end of the year. For example, this is the pandemic crash, and at one point, it was a bear bar, but by the time the year closed, it was a bull bar closing near its high. What you notice here is that the majority of the bars are bull bars, and bull bars closing near their highs. There are 63 years here, 
46 of the bars were bull bars and 17 bars were bear bars. That means if you predict that the market is going to be higher next year, you're probably going to be right. Yearly chart never has been in a bear trend. It's been in a trading range over here for a decade and over here. Remember, each bar is one year, so a decade is about 10 bars. But it's never been in a bear trend. We've never had a series of lower highs and lower lows. We had bear markets down 50% here, down 58% here, but not bear trends. Can you see the COVID crash? I told you where it was. And what about the 1987 crash? I was trading back in 1987, and that was a really dramatic event. So where is it on this chart? It was right here. And you don't notice it, but the market crashed 25% in one day. Yet the year ended up with a bull body, and it closed above the close of the prior year. So even when you have catastrophic things that you think might be the end of the world, they're buying opportunities in the stock market if you're a long-term investor. There's the 87 crash, and here's the COVID crash. At the time, they seemed horrible, but if you've been trading for a long time, you see them as buying opportunities, not as reasons to panic out, worrying about the end of the world. It's not going to happen. Big sell-offs like that are great opportunities to buy at a discount. And the discounts are brief and they're rare. Most of the time, the market's going up. So you don't get an opportunity to buy at a big discount. But when you get something very emotional, like that or this or the COVID crash, it's a great time to buy if you're an investor. Trader, they buy and sell all the time. But investors love big sell-offs. Here's an interesting thought. The market's down 50%, the market's down 58%. A trader who bought here lost 58% of his account at this point, or 58% of his position. If he sold out, he took a 58% loss, which is horrible. But an investor would look at this as a great opportunity to buy. And one thing he might do is place a limit order to buy at this prior low. And if he did, it was 50% down from the high, when the market got back here, he doubled his money. So he made 100%. The trader who bought here and sold here lost 50%. It's the same number of points, but this guy lost 50%, and this buyer made 100%. Remember, this is semi-log scale, so this obviously does not look like a 50% correction, but in fact it is, if you look at the scale. Most of the bars are bull bars closing near their highs. We've been getting some bear bars here, here, and here. But on the yearly chart, the stock market has always been in a bull trend. And therefore, if you get a reversal, it's either going to be brief, a bear bar, a bear bar here, and then the bull trend resumes, or it might lead to a trading range, and then the bull trend resumes. So there's not a lot of downside risk. Past three years, each was a bull bar closing near its high, a streak of three bars. But what has happened over the past 10 years? We have not had streaks of three consecutive bull bars. The last time we had one was here. Here we had five. And because the market is not having streaks with four or five bars very often, chances are this year or next year will be a bear bar. It looks at the moment that this year probably will be a bear bar. But you don't know, we still have 11 months to go. In the past 63 years, how long have corrections lasted? Two bars, one bar, one bar, three bars, one bar. So the longest correction in the past 60 years, and that includes the 87 crash, has only been three bars. And therefore, if we do get a correction here, it probably will be one or two bars, one or two years and it probably will not go down all that far. The first correction in a bull trend is usually going to be minor. So a bull trend, a correction, minor. Bull trend, minor. Bull trend, 
a three bar pullback, but minor. It did not lead to a bull flag. Instead, it led to a trading range, and the trading range was a bull flag, and the bull trend resumed. So, a minor correction, minor correction. And here, if we do pull back for a bar or two, it'll be a minor correction. But it might lead to a trading range for about a dozen years. I think we're going to get a trading range lasting a decade, like we had back in the 70s and in the 2000s. And I think it's going to start at some point in the next few years. But I also think that the first reversal down here will be minor and will probably go higher before we start to enter a decade long trading range. I put this as the top of the range. I don't know where the top of the range will be, but I think it will be higher than this year's high. So if we pull back for a bar or two, a year or two, I think we're still going to go higher. But I do think at some point in the next few years, we're going to enter a trading range. Now, why do I say that? Well, I'm sure you've heard that the average gain in the stock market is 8% a year. And we're up 100% from this low, and we're up several hundred percent from that low. If we're going to have an 8% average, and we're going up much more than that right now, if you get back to the 8% average, we're going to have to stop going up and go sideways to down for several years, maybe a dozen years like this or like that. And that's why I say we're probably not going a lot higher before we go sideways for about a decade or so. This is a monthly chart of the cash index of the S&P. And bear trends are rare. Remember, a bear trend is a series of lower highs and lower lows. There were four of them in the past 60 years. And the lower highs and lower lows were really pretty small legs up and down. But bear trend there, here, here, and here. I want to talk about V tops. Sometimes you hear about V bottoms or inverted V tops. I just call them V tops and V bottoms. And a V top means the market goes up very strongly and then suddenly reverses without first transitioning into a trading range. So a bull trend to a bear trend. And that's rare. In fact, it's the only one that you see on this entire chart. Typically, what happens is before you can get a bear trend, the bull trend stops going up starts to go sideways, and then it goes down. So goes up, stops going up five or 10 bars, and then goes down, and then here and here as well. The four bull markets all ended with the market entering a trading range before reversing. So what's the chance of this suddenly reversing into a bear trend? Well, small. In our sample of five examples here, we've had one that was a V-top and four the market transitioned into a trading range, which is what is normal on all markets, for all markets. And therefore, it's unlikely we're going to go from a bull trend into a bear trend on the monthly chart without first going sideways for five or 10 bars. In other words, a half a year or a year. And one other thing about this chart is a lot of times the market rallied and went sideways. Instead of going into a bear trend, the bull trend resumed. So up, sideways, the bears tried to get a reversal, they failed. And lots of examples of that going up sideways. Instead of getting a reversal, the bull trend resumed. You'd expect that because markets have inertia. They tend to continue what they're doing. And every attempt to reverse is more likely to become a bull flag or a trading range. And that trading range will be a bull flag. And then the bull trend will resume. This is a close-up of the E-mini monthly chart. And because the chart's in a bull trend, and because ultimately it's going to go higher, you might wonder, well, how far up it'll go. And one way to estimate where the market might start to get profit-taking is looking for measured move targets. Here we have a breakout bar. A breakout bar is simply a bull trend bar closing near its high, above the high of the prior bar, and often above some prior high. So this close is above that breakout point, the market tried to reverse, and they tried to make the breakout fail. Instead, this low tested that high. And that tells you that the market thinks this high is important. This low clearly is important. 
And when you have two important prices, they often lead to a measured move, and you get a third important price. And that third important price right now is here, just above where we turned down. This might be, in part, the reason why the market's reversing here. This is a measuring gap, the gap between that low and that high. That probably contributed to it. Some computers are placing trades based on that. This price is based upon the March contract, a continuation chart using the March contract. When March expires, the chart will be using the June contract and the prices will be a little different. This measure of target is based upon March prices. In June, the number will be different. Something not so obvious is this April 2021 low is above this March 2001 2021 high. So there's an actual gap here in the monthly chart, which is very unusual. Unusual is important. This is important. So that might turn out to be a measuring gap. So the market may go up for a measured move based upon that gap. And if it does, this is the current measured move target. If we're going to get there, I suspect it's going to take several years to get there. And if we close this gap, especially if several bars trade sideways around that gap, the market will end up ignoring that gap and this target will no longer be significant. I mentioned that during this trend, bull bars, bear bar, bull bar, bear, bull, bear, bull, bear. But now we're starting to alternate every bar, bull, bear, bull, bear, bull, bear. We've had three pushes up, one pullback, two pullback, three. So the bulls tried three times here in a short period of time to extend the trend, and they failed all three times. That is a micro wedge. If you look at the daily chart, there's an actual wedge, and it often attracts profit taking. The, how much profit taking will we get? Well, it's a micro wedge, it's a small pattern, so the profit taking probably will be small as well, maybe two or three bars, so, so maybe two or three months of sideways or down before the bull trend tries to resume. There's also another pretty interesting pattern here. Look at this bar. Its high is above the high of that bar. Its low is below the low of that bar. So it's an outside down bar. And the next bar was an outside up bar. We have consecutive outside bars. Outside, outside. That is an OO pattern. That's a breakout mode pattern. And a breakout mode pattern simply means the market has a 50% chance of a successful bull breakout, a 50% chance of a successful bear breakout, and a 50% chance that the first breakout will fail. And we ended up getting a bull breakout. The bears tried to get a reversal, they failed. And now there's something pretty interesting that's taking place right there. We have a second consecutive OO pattern. December is outside of November. January is outside of December. So now we have two attempts to reverse the trend late in the trend. That increases the chances that we will get follow through selling, that we will go down. January is, is the breakout bar. It's the signal bar. For the bulls, it's a buy above the January high. For the bears, it's a sell below the January low. However, how good has it been buying above the high of the prior bar over the past six months? You bought above that bar, it sold off. Bought above this bar, it pulled back. Bought above this bar, it sold off a month or two later. So I think the odds are if we go above the January high, we will not go up very far. I think it's more likely we'll go below the January low. But as I said, I don't think the pullback will last more than another couple months. How far down will it go? Well, whenever you have any kind of a wedge, here a micro wedge, the first target is the start of the wedge, which is this low. And we've already reached that target. And then another target is a measured move based upon the height of the wedge which is right now the height of the January range. And that would take us down here. And then the 20 bar or the 20 month exponential moving average. So those are all reasonable targets. This could be the end of the selling. We could go sideways and then back up. I think we'll go lower. I think this is a big enough bear surprise so that we'll get a second leg sideways to down, probably to the moving average, maybe to a measured move down here, which would be around that 4,000 big round number. Markets, when they reverse, often come all the way back down to breakout points. This is 
the pre-pandemic high. This is the pandemic in 2020. And the market broke above it, tested it, and then resumed up. That is a target that a lot of traders will pay attention to. They're hoping that the market gets down there and then they'll look to buy. And some are selling here, betting that we will get down there. That's down 31% from the high. While it's possible that we get there this year, I think it's not very likely at all. And then another target is sometimes when you have a strong breakout and a reversal, the market gets all the way down to the start of the final leg up, which is down here. That is the pandemic low. Remember, I said that the yearly chart is probably going to evolve into a trading range over a couple of years and that the trading range will probably last about a decade. And that process should start within the next few years. It might be starting now. I think there's probably a 30% chance that this is the beginning of a decade-long trading range. I think 70% chance we're going to go higher before we transition into a trading range. But if this is the top for the next decade, then this breakout point becomes a likely target. It's also right around a 50% retracement from this low to that high. Again, this is based upon the March contract. And what are the chances that we retrace the entire rally back down to the pandemic low? Right now, I think there's only a 10% chance that we're ever going to go back down there, ever in your trading career, ever in history. The pandemic low is 56% down from where we are, and 56% corrections are very rare. If we go sideways and then up a little bit, this might become a 60 or 70% correction, and I doubt we're going to get that. So there's only a 10% chance we'll come all the way down here. Maybe a 30% chance we'll come down to the breakout point. Obviously, if we start to sell off more and more and more, instead of 30% chance, it becomes 40%, 50%. But right now, there's only a 30% chance we'll get down to the pre-pandemic high during the current sell-off. You always hear experts on TV talking about fundamentals. Do I care what Goldman Sachs thinks about the fundamentals? No, not at all. But I do care about the opinions of the thousand major financial institutions because they are the market. And the only way I can know what their opinion is, is we're looking at the charts. The charts are a running tally of the cumulative opinion of all the major financial institutions in the world. It's where their dollars are going. If most of them are buying, the market goes up. If most of them are selling, the market goes down. And right now, most of them are buying. They're doing some selling here, but so far, not all that dramatic. As I said, the best the bears probably can get this year is a trading range. The bottom of the range may already be in. I think it's probably going to be lower. I think it'll be below the moving average, maybe down around 4,000, maybe a little bit lower. But I do think the bull trend will resume. The bulls are hoping it's resuming right now, but I think they'll probably go lower before it resumes. I think it'll resume more toward the second half of the year. And I don't even know if we'll get a new high. If we keep selling off, if we sell off 25, 30%, then we may just stay in a trading range all year. But I think we're going to a new high either this year or next year. At the moment, I think we'll get a new high before the year is over. Weekly chart, the E-mini. An interesting thing here, on the way up, the market stalled at every big round number, 2,500, 2,600, 3,200, you know, 4,500, except one right here. It didn't stall at all. It just raced through here. And that big round number was 4,000. And therefore, you have to wonder, will it get tested over the next several months? It might. This breakout above 4,000 was a series of bull bars, a spike up, you can call it a breakout. That's a very strong bull trend. You typically get a pullback and then a channel, a weaker bull trend. And then you typically get a breakout below the bull channel and a couple legs down, often to the start of the channel down here. So whenever I see a bull channel, I think of it as a bear flag because there's a 75% chance we're going to get a bear breakout and only a 25% chance we're going to get a successful bull breakout and an even stronger bull trend. 
right now we are getting the bear breakout below the bull channel. So you have a strong bull trend, a weaker bull trend, and then it typically transitions into a trading range. I think we're in the early stages of a trading range. This could be the bottom. We could go sideways to down, down here, maybe to the bottom of the channel, maybe to the bottom of the breakout, maybe closing that gap on the weekly chart. There's also a gap there on the monthly chart. If we do get down to that gap in around 4,000, that would be a 20% correction. And I think there's probably a 50% chance we'll get there this year or next year. 50% chance we'll get the 20% correction, 50% chance the correction will be less than that. Daily chart. Very strong bull channel. But then in here, we're starting to get bigger bear bars, a series of bear bars, more consecutive bear bars, and more big bear bars closing near their lows. That means more aggressive profit taking. Instead of bulls buying at new highs, they're starting to sell. So the bulls are buying low, selling high, and we're getting these deeper corrections. And the bears are now starting to make money selling above prior highs. And here, there was panic selling, both bulls selling out and bears selling to get short. So the market, its character is changing. We're getting more aggressive profit taking. Bulls are becoming weaker, bears are becoming stronger and the market's transitioning into a trading range. Whenever you get alternating big moves up and down, so we're big up and down and big up and big down, now big up again, it creates confusion. And there are two ways to handle that. One is you say, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going to happen. It's, the market's going to kill me. And the other way is you look at it and say, ah, it's confusing. That's my radar telling me that the market is probably forming a trading range. And if it's in a trading range, I'm not going to be holding positions up or down, I'm going to be taking quick profits. I'll buy low, I'll sell high, I'll take quick profits. And that's what traders are starting to do. And the result is a trading range. Again, we don't know where the bottom is. The top might be here. You know, we may go up to a new high, it may be a little bit higher. Right now, it looks like this is the top of the range. A bull trend is a series of higher lows and higher highs. And here, we broke below that low, we broke below the December low, which is a pretty major low. We had a strong rally to a new high. And we even broke below the October low, an extremely strong rally to a new high, and another rally to a new high. And once a bull trend starts to break below major higher lows, the bull trend is over. That does not mean a bear trend has started. It means the market has evolved into a trading range. It may grow into a bear trend, but right now we're in a trading range. You could argue it's a bear trend. We have a, a lower low here. We have a lower high here. But more likely, this is a trading range. And you can see we had very aggressive buying at that October low. If you've only traded a few years and you look at this past month, you say, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But the market only fell 12% in about four weeks. It sounds like a lot, but I've been trading for 35 years. And I've seen many charts that look like this, and I've seen a lot of charts that look a lot worse. This is a daily chart. We fell 12% in four weeks. Here's a five-minute chart, a five-minute chart. The market fell 9% in 25 minutes. That was the flash crash back in 2010. Obviously, much more dramatic than what we have now. The financial crisis. The market fell 10% in 90 minutes. So that's almost as much as the market has fallen in a month, and it did it in 90 minutes. And way back in 1987, I was trading, and the market fell 26% in one day. In one day, 26%, not 12% not in four weeks. This is 26% in one day. As a side note, back then at the day of the crash, I heavily shorted the S&P futures contracts on the open. And I had to go to the office. I had a full surgery schedule. I'm an eye surgeon, or at least I was, I was practicing eye surgeon back then. And I had to close out my position before going to the office. And as I was driving into the office listening to the radio, it was really crazy to listen to the stock market report. They're saying, 
The stock market is down. It's down a lot. We don't know how much it's down. It's down a lot. Had I stayed home and held on to my position, I would have made over a million dollars in today's dollars. It would have been a million dollar day. Whenever you have a correction from a wedge top or from any kind of a buy climax, you expect a couple legs down. The bulls are hoping this is leg one, bounce, and this is leg two. And it might be, but it's not enough bars. Typically, when you have a wedge top and then a reversal, you get two legs down, but the total bars down usually come out to be about half as many bars as in the wedge. And this is not enough bars. So I think it's a complex first leg down. So one pullback, two, creating a big leg one. I think we'll bounce and then we'll get a second leg sideways or down. Wedge top, three attempts to push the trend higher, failing. The bulls take profits. They want to wait for at least a couple legs down before buying again. They want to make sure that the bears cannot create a bear trend and that the sell-off results in a trading range. At that point, they'll buy again. Sometimes when you have a climactic sell-off like this, you'll hear people on TV talking about a V-bottom. V-bottoms are rare, and we have not had one on the daily chart since December of 2018. A V-bottom is a big, big sell-off, 10 or 20 bars, and then an immediate big reversal up without having a second leg sideways to down. Here's December of 2018. We had 10 consecutive bear bars. Very bearish. And then we reversed up sharply. We had a minor pullback and we just kept going up. This is a V bottom. They're rare. So chances are what's going on now with the stock market is not going to be a V bottom. We're going to get a bounce and it might be a very sharp rally over the next two or three weeks, but we'll probably get a test down to the low, and I suspect we'll even go a little bit lower. A V bottom, a very climactic sell-off, and a very climactic reversal without a test of the low of the bear trend. Here's a higher low major trend reversal. You can call it a higher low double bottom but it's only a few bars down, so it's really a minor reversal, yet it led to a major reversal. The pattern itself should have been minor, but it became major. So the probability was that we'd get more of a test down. We did not get it. Instead, we got a V bottom. I talked about measured move targets for the bulls. What about for the bears? Well, we have a major Higher low here, we have a top here, maybe it'll lead to a measured move. We're almost to that measured move target right now, and the market's reversing up pretty sharply. Suppose the measured move is from this high to that low, then it would be down here, 3,700, well below that gap over there, around 4,000. What's going to happen is at some point soon, maybe today, we're going to get a bounce, might be a few bars, might be a week or two, and it could be very strong. The bulls are hoping that this is a double bottom, a lower low double bottom. They want a V bottom and they want the bull trend to resume. We're going to get a bounce and it could be sharp, but I think it's going to result in a lower high and then we'll get a second leg sideways to down. Second leg sideways to down, it could be Below the first leg, a lower low, it could be a higher low, it could be sideways, a higher low, it could be a lot lower, but I think we're going to get a second leg sideways to down. Whenever you have a wedge, one, two, three, and then a reversal, you're looking for two legs down, one, so one, pullback, two. That pullback from the first leg down usually is the right shoulder of a head and shoulders top, and the second leg up of the wedge is the left shoulder. So I think what's going to happen is we'll get a head and shoulders top over the next several weeks. But most major tops fail to create big bear trends. 60% of the time, the bull trend will resume. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to get a couple legs sideways to down, maybe a little bit lower. Maybe the second leg is a little bit higher. And then later in the year, we'll try to resume. If the sell-off is very deep or if we just start to get smaller sideways bars, 
We might not get a new high this year, but I do think we're going to get a new high probably this year, if not this year, the next year. Trading ranges, it's not going to be as clean as this, straight down, straight up, down and up. The legs will subdivide like this. We have a couple legs up, subdividing this, a couple legs down. So it's going to be a lot messier than this, but this is the overall general picture. A couple of big legs down, and then the bulls will try to get resumption up. As I said, big up, big down creates big confusion. And when traders are confused, the only thing they're certain of is the market's probably not going to go too far before it reverses. And therefore, traders take quick profits. They look to buy low, sell high, and take quick profits. And trading ranges can last a long time. That's why I'm saying we may not get a new high this year. At the moment, I think we will. But if we start to go sideways and the bars start to get smaller, if the sell-off goes down lower, then we might not get a new high this year. This is pretty interesting, I think. People tend to forget that the E-mini market is a futures market. And right now, March is the front month. And that means the March contract is predicting where the cash price will be when the March contract expires. And right now, the cash index is at 44.10 today. And the March contract is at 44.03. It's seven points lower. That means the institutions think when March expires at the end of March, the cash index is going to be seven points lower. And then look at June, September, and December. They're lower still. And that means the institutions right now are predicting that the stock market is going to be lower. They expect the stock market to be sideways to down for the remainder of the year. That can change at any time. For example, they may decide that we're going to have a strong rally at the end of the year. If they do, December will start getting above the cash index price, but right now it's below. So right now the institutions are betting that the market is going to be sideways to down all year. In summary, we have a micro wedge on the monthly chart, and we're probably going to be in a trading range for several months. Worst case is we get down to the pandemic high, 30% down. I think maybe a 30% chance we'll do that. I think more likely we'll go down 15, 20%, maybe to the 20 month moving average bounce, go sideways for several months, possibly all year. But ultimately, either later this year or next year, I think we'll go to a new high. Yearly chart. It's possible that we've seen the high for the next five or 10 years, but I think that's not likely. 30% chance this is the start of a trading range that'll last for a decade. That means 70% chance it's not. 70% chance we might pull back for a bar or two, but I think we'll go higher. But I also think sometime in the next several years, we are going to enter a trading range for a decade like we did here and like we did here. Again, I'm Al Brooks. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful.